Digital Golf Doc back with you today to talk about one of your favorite and one of my favorite topics, club head speed. Now, I'm sure you've heard some version of this sentence. Increase your flexibility in order to increase your club head speed. And that's true. If everything else is kept equal and you have a bigger shoulder turn, you will be able to generate more club head speed. However, there are other ways to do it. And today I'm going to give you two different options of how to increase your club head speed that does not require increased flexibility. For option one, we're going to look at something players like John Rahm do extremely well. Option one to increase your club head speed without increasing your flexibility is to improve the separation or what we call dissociation of the upper body and lower body. Basically being able to move these parts of your body independently. So it's really cool is if you go to the top of a backswing with a professional golfer, put it in super slow motion, or you have access to some data for motion capture, what you will see is that as the upper body goes back and reaches the top of the backswing, the hips actually start down the target line before the upper body or the thoracic spine finishes rotating the other way. Think about how amazing that is. We are literally taking our body and sending it in two different directions. And that separation of upper and lower is what we call the X factor. Players like John Rahm, Tony Finau, guys with shorter swings, use it extremely well to generate a whole lot of power. I want to give you one more visual for that. There's a few different ways to create this visual. Typically, I'll do this on a player with two golf clubs, and I'll hold them there for the golfer. Since we can't do that, since I'm by myself, I'm going to take this club and slide it through my front belt loops because it's going to give you the same type of visual. So when I go to set up, we can see my hips are aimed at the target. And as we go in the backswing, my hips turn away from the target. So if we go all the way up to the top of the backswing, what you're going to see is the angle of my shoulder turn is represented by this club and my hips are here. This difference between these two points is that X factor. So when I drive with my hips first, I increase that X factor, creating that slingshot effect, that separation and that catch up of the separation that creates a ton of power without having to have massive mobility and a huge shoulder turn. And that's why it's a little bit more than flexibility that creates your club head speed. So I want to break this down a little bit further. So I'm going to take you some videos of John Rahm. And we can take a look at his swing face on and see what he does. So we take a look here at John Rahm and we're going to put him up at the top of the backswing here and draw a few lines. So the line closer to horizontal is along the hip plane. Then we've got one along the shoulder plane where I didn't want to draw one, but I think you should pay attention to was just the position of the arms and hands. So we're talking about a relatively short backswing here. But again, if you see Rom's stats at the end of the year, he's always up toward the top and driving distance. Really hits the ball well. But it's not because of this massive amount of motion he has. It's really the sequence. So we get an idea between these two lines here, kind of the separation of turn we're getting between the hips and shoulders and how fast he fires his body that creates the speed. Where I'll show you in a second here, Rory McIlroy, who really uses the length of the backswing to create the massive amounts of speed with the club head that he does. Here we've got Rory McIlroy at the top of the swing. So again, I drew some lines for the hips and for the shoulders. And again, especially pay attention to his arms and hands. The distance between his hands and where Rom sets at the top is pretty significant. So Rory really has a lot more time, or what I call a longer runway to gain speed, but that's directly related to how far he's turning. Again, Rom turns much shorter, but because of the speed at, wh at which he fires and the separation he gets between the upper and lower body can still generate immense club head speed. TPI did a really cool thing once where they actually looked at both Rom and Rory and they found that they had pretty similar amounts of separation between the lower and upper body. Rory just turned this far back to create his separation, and Rom didn't turn nearly as far back to create the separation. 
So again, the point we just want to see here is that there's different ways to generate clip head speed. We can use length, we can use speed, we can use separation, we can use the different joints to create different levers and hinges. So there are really, really a lot of ways to generate an immense amount of club head speed. The second way to get more club head speed without having to increase your flexibility is to improve your ability to generate power. Now power is the key word there. Notice I didn't say force. Force is an absolute. It's an energy to create movement. Power is force applied over a certain time. So we can have something that is the same force, but whoever applies that force quicker has more power. Again, that's really important in the golf swing. So we're trying to take a light object, accelerate it as fast as possible to the downswing. So we need maximum speed from here, top of swing to impact. Now, I have an example that can help you picture this. Say we have two cars, a Corvette and a Honda Accord. Both of these cars have been specially designed to, to top out at 100 miles an hour. However, the Corvette can do it in four and a half seconds. The Honda needs in nine total seconds. So if we have a race and that race is topped out at five seconds, the Corvette's going to win because it gets to that maximum force much quicker. So again, we have to get force production from here to here. So it's a little bit different than just being able to muscle something and create more force. So this applies to your training plan because it doesn't mean you only train strength, getting your legs stronger, getting your abs and obliques stronger. You do want to do that, but you also want to put some training in there that helps you express that power. So we're talking about medicine ball throws. If you ever heard of the super speed training system, the stack system, those are all ways to generate power. I have a video of some of my personal favorite ways to generate power that you'll see on your screen now, and you can follow if that's something you need to work on. Now, the next thing is especially for you older golfers, because as we age, we do lose muscle, and we lose type 2 fast twitch muscle fiber faster than the other types of muscle. And those are the muscle fibers that allow us to create maximum power. Now, the good news is the research tells us that we can train in a way that helps us not lose those fast twitch muscle fibers as fast as we normally would. But it's gonna require training, it's gonna require exercises and practicing producing maximum power. Thanks for joining me today, everyone, where we learned how to increase your club head speed in other ways than just maximizing mobility. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I've got more videos on this same topic as well as some key exercises you can do to play better golf, to hit the golf ball farther, and to stay healthier. But that's it for today. Enjoy your weekend, and hopefully have a great round of golf.